All right, so you might have or might not have watched all this stuff in this uh, beginner course so far. And um, maybe you even understand uh, most of the stuff that I talked about. Maybe not. Uh, anyways, like either way, you you now are kind of, since this is almost the beginning of the beginner course, you're kind of at the position of having to do stuff on your own. I mean, there's a lot of other tutorials out there, uh, also of me, but also many other people uh, that you can also watch. But you know, at some point, you're gonna have to do stuff yourself. So, I guess uh, what I, what you're seeing right now is kind of the worst thing <laughs> that you can see, and that's like this empty, uh, infinite canvas of Touch Designer. So. Um, I, I really feel that problem. I still kind of have that, not as much anymore, but you know, especially in the beginning, it's super hard to, to actually start a project because you, you learn all this stuff and when you watch it, you kind of understand it, but then, then you sit in, in front of this <laughs> and then you're like, what am I going to do now? <clears throat> so before I actually practically tell you how to do that, I'm going to like, there, there's a few things you need to maybe ask yourself before. So there's there's two two kind of ways here um, that you might have to do a project. So in the beginning, it's probably just for your own, um, so for for yourself. But later, you you might want to um, create stuff for clients. And in both cases, there are uh, two two kind of possibilities here. One is that you or the client knows exactly what you or them want. Uh, or at least uh, some kind of direction or um, like a, an example of what kind of outcome they or you want to have. The other uh, option is that, you know, either the client, neither the client nor you uh, know what, what you want to achieve. So um, both parts kind of have their, their um, ups and downs, you know, or like the, the, their like perks. Um, so it's actually not always that bad to not have an idea what you want to do. Um, but in some a lot of cases, it's very useful. So I, I generally like when I'm working with clients, I really like when they have some kind of idea of what they want. And the more precise the idea is, usually the easier it is to to work on that. So um, if you want to create something on your own, uh, or like or for yourself just for experimenting you should always also have some kind of idea or at least some kind of technique that you want to like uh, look into you know if, if if that's the case actually if you want to if there's some kind of technique you want to look into that that's great because then you you have some kind of um, starting point um, <clears throat> The thing is, uh, especially as a beginner, even if you have some kind of idea what the outcome should be like, uh, then then it, it can be uh, quite difficult to actually achieve that. And um, the thing is, I often actually start stuff and something completely different comes out at the end. And that's totally fine. It's actually a lot of fun. The process is a lot of fun because I'm starting something and... I really get into it and like, I don't know, work on it a lot. And then, you know, there's all these versions that you have saved and then you see uh, the the end result is something completely different than what you thought about in the, uh, in the beginning. Anyway, so this is kind of a rant. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that there's some, some questions you might want to have, like ask yourself in the beginning. And that's like uh, the basic questions question of what you uh, like if you want to have a 3D or a 2D scene. So that's already quite a difference in how you approach the project. Because if you want to have a 2D scene, then you know you can also use instancing for that. Um, but usually, uh, if you want to have a 2D scene, you're just gonna work in tops because um, it's also like the most efficient way pr sometimes uh, or most of the time. Um, but also, you know, sometimes you, you might want to use instancing for a 2D scene, but you're probably not going to work with, like, uh, subs that much. So you already kind of have an idea of what kind of operator family you're going to look into. Um, I'm going to get to that in a second again. So the other thing is when you have, like, a 3D scene, then you already know, okay, I'm, I'm going to need some kind of render setup. I'm going to work with subs in some way. And then you need to ask yourself, okay, am I going to just work with... 
with subs as they are, am I gonna use some kind of shading? So am I gonna use like uh, some kind of map or like co so like color maps, height maps? So am I gonna use like maybe a fong or a PBR? Um, so this, there's a lot of things you you might consider in the beginning. So before you actually start, so. Um, don't just drop random operators on the scene because most most of them actually don't work with an operator before them uh, and there's not that many operators that are like uh, you know starting points so um yeah lots of just talking <laughs> i'm gonna just show you a bit like how to uh how to actually just get rid of this empty canvas because once you have something it's a lot easier to to actually keep going all right, so let's say you want to create some kind of 3D scene. Then um, what I usually start with is a sphere or a grid. Uh, these are kind of my favorite sobs, um, and they can be used in, in, in various ways. So you can just use a sphere for, um, for uh, instancing. So this could be the thing that is instanced, or this could be the base, for instance, or like the source. So where where you take the position from, uh, this could also be uh, just you know just a sphere where you uh, use some some uh, like a height map, so like a fong on or like a PBR, something like that, <clears throat> or you know you know a combination of all of these, and the same with the grid. So this can be just uh, this can be used for instancing. This can be used as a uh, just a kind of uh, a a plane where you put on a map and then displace this. And I'm gonna get. I'm gonna show that later. Um, just very quickly. Okay, so what I could do now is, you know, just add a geo to this. Um, add a camera here, uh, so we have like a basic setup. Might want to have a light, um, and I'm just gonna drop a render here and uh, a transform always with the background black. And a null, and you know that's nothing great, but we already have something. So we have like a render setup. We have like a sphere there. Okay, cool. So what can we do now? Let's say, all right, maybe I want to instance this, and so I might want to. Um, maybe I'm just gonna drop in a, a tube because I feel like it, and then I change the height of that, and then I um, put a null here. Turn instancing on. Uh, put that in here. Uh, so I can use that as a default instance of operator. Then I can just use the position data. Make the sphere here smaller. So like maybe point one. And um, all right, that's already something. I'm gonna turn off these. Um, I'm gonna on the sphere. I'm gonna like I don't know go down with the rows and columns. So because now I might want to put like a line mat on this, so I can just put that on there. And now you can see okay that that already looks interesting. That's still like a lot of rows and columns actually. So for this, we we might actually just go down to three because uh, you know it's it's a bit more <laughs> efficient. But it's also like I don't know now we can change this. And I could technically make this audio reactive. That's already something, or um, just increase the the number of rows. Um, and you know that already looks interesting. That's already something. Now you could go to the to the line, um, change the width, so it looks a bit cooler. And there you go. Uh, now you could go to to the post processing here. So anything after ren the rendering, it's pretty much post processing. Um, you could use it displace. Um, just a bit, yeah, a bit less, a bit more there. You could change the UV weight again. You could make this audio reactive, and um, I don't know. You could put like a noise here, and I don't know. That's it's something. <laughs> now you have a network. Now you have something that, in this case, not, but generally you might have completely created on your own, and that's already a great feeling. And now you can. Do anything with the post processing. You can go crazy with the the instancing and and test some stuff out. Maybe um, change the the scale of this um, of these things. 
Uh, maybe you don't want to have display sync actually. Uh, I don't know. You could change the, the you could rotate the camera. You can, um, you know, instead of having a line here, maybe we want to have this like a bit higher resolution. We could now go with a phone. Maybe get rid of the the scaling here. It's actually kind of ugly. Um, now we have some wiggly lines that are still running smoothly. Now we could go with some noise maybe here. I'm gonna get back to noise in a second. Um, we can drop that on here as a color map. It looks super ugly. Perfect. Um, maybe we want to make this colorful. I don't know. You know, we have something. <laughs> and it's something that you can work with now. You could also use the grid instead of the, the tube and that actually looks pretty organic actually. Like, looks quite interesting. Um, so you might want to go closer with the camera. You might want to make this these spheres a bit smaller or maybe even bigger because it looks interesting that they're kind of colliding there. And okay, so and what I also always recommend with noise, especially in the sub world, go down with the harmonics. It's always going to look more natural, the movement. don't really like harmonics in the sub world. Just a small tip there. Um, OK, so that's one way to go. So yeah, that could be something you do. And um, obviously, you can take anything. You could, you could take a rectangle for these uh, as a base for instances and this looks still awful but you know <laughs> it's something <laughs> okay now I'm gonna just uh, I can just I don't know leave this here bypass all of these uh, actually I'm just gonna delete them and now I'm gonna um, now we're still in front of an empty canvas so that was like a 3d scene now let's say we want to just have like a, just play around with tops. So always a great way, and I usually start with that is noise. So let's put out down some noise here, and now instead of an empty canvas, we now have lots of possibilities to work from this. So we could like change the resolution of this to whatever we want. Maybe change the period. Uh, we could go to the transform. We could animate this using abs time dot seconds times like point two maybe and I can't write there we go um, might want to go down with the exponent add an edge here I'm also gonna add a transform as always and a null uh, let's look at that more closely in the background so might want to go up with the string for this and there we have some wiggly lines and I'm also going to go down with the harmonics here and with the period I, we, we can change the scale of the Y to like 0.2 then we have some interesting stuff and there you go that's already something with just four operators and now we could do with some feedback maybe so I'm just dropping stuff here rather quickly. This is just for you to see that, like, kind of the workflow. So I'm gonna change this to add, put that on there again, put like a level in here, change the opacity to like 8. There we go. Also looks interesting. And now I maybe think, and I actually have been at this point quite often that I just started off with tops and some lovely feedback maybe um, now I might be thinking oh, okay I, c I could use this as a color map or a displacement map so again I'm, I'm gonna go into the 3d world and just whoops use a grid I'm gonna make this 0.9 by 1.08 so it's like the same dimensions I'm gonna add a geo and a camera and render. This is always the most fun part. Just setting this up. We uh, might want to have a light, and we might want to have a phone or a PBR, whatever you feel like. 
and then we can use this as a color map. Um, maybe then we create a normal map, put this on here. Might want to use a height map, displace the vertices. We need an attribute create for this. Compute the tangents. And for now, just turn this on instead of this one. And maybe we want to go higher with the rows and columns on this grid. And, and then we can move closer to this. Put a transform here again. <laughs> Uh, to make that black and there we go I mean that's interesting to say the least and, and now we've created this network now we can go back here and change some stuff so we can I don't know change something about the noise um, anything really uh, I can I can go into the feedback loop which is always very powerful to, to add, just add stuff there I could like uh, rotate this um, you know, because I feel like it. <laughs> uh, I could also copy paste this noise and uh, maybe change the seed, add another noise, put that down there, and we have some interesting stuff going on. Add a composite here, put that in there, maybe turn it, change it to difference, and uh, there we go. Kind of something like a graphic of 4040 <laughs> we have going on here. Um, yeah, so, you know, it might seem complicated in the beginning, but it's really, like, the, the basic concept of it is quite simple. You just start with a texture, and then you add this onto a geo, and then at the end, you, like on a geometry, and then you, again, have a texture, and then we could do some post-processing processing here again. So we could displace this again, and which I just really like doing generally. So yeah, that's a cool graphic that we have. Now you could export this and upload it to Instagram, and yeah, great. <laughs> uh, all right, so these are just examples. So I just want to kind of show you that an empty canvas isn't that as bad as you <laughs> as you might think in the beginning. Um, and also generally I, I would recommend you know when you're like like two things one of them is obviously just watching more tutorials of me though <laughs> uh, uh, like generally watch more videos of other people it's always great to see uh, um, other people doing stuff how they start um, and then kind of uh, developing like just trying out yourself uh, experimenting more with these technique techniques that are shown don't just you know take techniques as they are really try to experiment uh, and really just go crazy with all kinds of parameters that are uh, that you that you see um, and um, also when you have like your your own projects uh, already like at some point you have you're gonna have like a list of, of, of projects um, if you if you keep doing stuff and the cool thing is um, then you can just, you know, revisit stuff that you made before. So maybe go back a month and see, okay, I had this idea and then you just develop that further. And yeah, also generally I can recommend really going crazy with feedback loops. I've uh, done a lot of stuff with that. It's, it's a lot of fun. So just combining noise, comp composition and feedback, those things are, are great too to create some, some cool looking graphics and then, you know, mapping this onto, onto 3D geometry. Instancing is a great way. Um, yeah, so I, I hope this is useful in some kind of way. Uh, there, you know, have a look at my other tutorials to see how I start there. It's, it's gonna be similar to this. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, yeah, I, I hope you have fun. I hope you have good clients at some point. <laughs> and I'll see you on the next video.